We passed the 175,000 subscriber mark. Thank you all so much. Did that during the Thursday night game. Help us get to 175.5, only 265 away. Hit that sub button for us right now. We're going to begin with Zach Ertz as a possibility for Dallas. The Cardinals granted Ertz's release in exchange for one game check, which I thought was very petty of Arizona, but ah, whatever. He wants to latch on with a contender down the stretch this year. Now, assuming he clears waivers, there's been plenty of discussion of, ooh, could Dallas be a fit? The rationale being the, oh, well, Ertz was linked trade rumors with Dallas. There was one fake report, uh, which wasn't, it was just not even fake, just wrong report, because fake implies it's like made up on purpose. One wrong report said the Cowboys and Cardinals had talked. They did not talk. Uh, so the, the, the rumors, the speculations of, well, Dallas needs a tight end for some reason was a story for like the first four weeks of the season. So Dallas has been linked to Ertz previously. And, okay, I guess if you want. Uh, two is, look at this. Ertz is a household name. You guys know him. You watched him play against the Cowboys twice a year for a long time. This season, 187 yards, 6.9 yards per catch, and, and one touchdown. My, my issues here with, with Zach Ertz are that he's not that good anymore. And this is a guy that, that already offers you nothing after the catch. He has never been a tackle breaker. He, he doesn't bring you any juice whatsoever. Jake Ferguson is already better than Zach Ertz. He's going to put up better numbers this year than what Ferguson did last season. You have Schoonmaker. You have McEwen for now. You have Hendershot coming back in the near future. More on that at the end of today's show, by the way. Simply put, Zach Ertz does not have much left for a team that has a number one tight end, I'd argue maybe your second best playmaker on offense, in Jake Ferguson. Ertz is not better than Ferguson right now. He's not a good blocker, Ertz is. That's not something he's good at. Not at his age especially. He's never been a premier blocker. He's been fine in the past, but he's always been more of a move tight end. Aging move tight ends don't move the needle for me. The best case you get here uh, with, with Ertz is you get an old number three tight end who doesn't help on special teams. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a role for that guy. You know, a team like Arizona, make, or, you know, a team like Baltimore, I should say, makes more sense. Frankly, a team like Philadelphia makes more sense because they don't have great tight ends behind, behind uh, uh, injured Dallas Goddard right now. There are, uh, if the Bengals had healthy Joe Burrow, Ertz would have been a Bengal. But Dallas, I, I, I don't need him. He, he doesn't make my team better at all. So would you sign Zach Ertz? It's up to you guys. It's democracy after all. Why for yes and for no? Sound off in the comment section right now. The pin comment. So if the ad comes on YouTube, take advantage. Go vote. We'd be remiss not to check in with the latest on Shaq Leonard at this stage. He has taken uh, visits with both the Cowboys and the Eagles. Uh, by the way, as we sit here filming this, Ertz uh, cleared waivers today. Eagles will have interest in him. That makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, anyway, there's, the, the only teams interested in Leonard seem to be the Cowboys and the Eagles. At least that's what we've heard of so far. Both teams have a need at linebacker. I think, especially with Zach Cunningham banged up, the Eagles have maybe a, a, bigger, um, you know, a, 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 a bigger need at that position. Right now, it's Nicholas Morrow, Christian Ellis and Ben Van Summeren. That is a bad core. Like, Rashawn Evans was terrible against the, the, the Seahawks in like three snaps that he played. <sighs> Evans would be their number two linebacker right now. So Leonard has an easier path to playing time because of all of those injuries at this stage. Here's what Jerry Jones said after the game about Leonard. I don't know. They said they're going to get back with us this weekend, probably after Philadelphia plays Sunday is my guess. So... I would assume that means after the game, they'll, he'll make a decision. So we hear something Sunday night, I guess. I don't know. Maybe Monday morning. We'll see. We had a great visit, and that's pretty much the way we left it. Okay. We'll see what happens there. Um, again, I, I have, I, 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 I'm down to get him. It's not the end of the world if you don't. He's not the same player he was in his prime. Who do you think ends up signing Shaq Leonard? C for the Cowboys, E for the Eagles. Again, I've handicapped this 60% Philly, 40% Dallas 
Uh, Leonard is he's, he's 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 not a complete nightmare, you know, awful football player. Can't make a roster anymore. He, he, I, I think he'd be your number three linebacker right now. I think he'd be behind Damone Clark, and he'd definitely be behind Marquise Bell on third downs. And that's the issue here. I I suspect at least. I think Leonard wants to play more on third downs. If if Dallas offers him the opportunity to, or if Philadelphia offers him more chances, why wouldn't he take that? That, that makes more sense for him trying to prove he still has it and potentially cash in next offseason. Uh, today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. I'm a big fan of what Prize Picks offers. It's the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America, and you're not battling thousands of other players. It is just you against the numbers. You pick two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It is as easy as it comes. You can mix and match NFL, college football, NFL, NBA, etc. It's I, I love the flex play because I got to get two out of three right, and I'm good at that. Seven of my last eight I have hit. Here are my picks this week. Justin Herbert, more than passing yards. George Kittle, more than receiving yards. Because again, that in that Eagles middle of the field is kind of shaky. And David Montgomery, more than half touchdown. So one Montgomery touchdown. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Hundred bucks. We're going to talk more Dak Prescott today as well. Uh, I saw some of the, the lame talking heads at Fox Sports, the ones that are only slightly really offensive and not the ones who just like make fun of Dak having a kid, which was pretty damn embarrassing. Craig Carton, you clown show. Uh, the buzz for Dak continues to grow because we're all watching him play football and going, wow, he's playing incredible ball right now. If you're looking for that MVP statement game, there it was. You know, if you're going to be out there like Acho saying, oh, well, the Cowboys would have won those games with Cooper Rush. They ain't winning that game with Rush. Not a chance. Dak was the single biggest reason Dallas won that football game. And the new MVP odds, you'll see some different ones across the board, different sites, by the way, uh, in large part because there's a lot of disagreement here. Dak is now number two, which I think is as high as he's ever been, I think. Uh, maybe maybe at one point that run in, in, in 2020 he was high, but I'm not, I'm not too sure. Anyway, or 2019 even. Uh, plus 375, Hertz is still the betting favorite. That could flip if they lose against San Francisco maybe. I think Brock Purdy should be higher on this list, by the way. No real obvious like, up. Oh, that's got to be the guy this year because the quarterback play for the most part across the NFL has been down this year. Not your guy though. 70.1% completion percentage. 3,234 yards, 174 rushing yards, 28 touchdowns, and six total turnovers. Since the 49ers game, since the bye, he has been incredible. 70.5% completion rate, 2,000 plus yards. He's averaging yards per attempt, by the way. He's averaging 8.66 yards per attempt. To put that in perspective, Obviously, we all think Mahomes is the best quarterback in football, but his offense is not going to hit him back. Uh, Mahomes' career high for yards per attempt was 8.8. That was in his 5,000-yard, 50-touchdown pass season. The, the play you're getting from Dak Prescott right now absolutely is an MVP caliber play. Now, it has to continue. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of games left to be played, but 23 touchdowns and two turnovers – he has been the, the big reason why they've won all those games. He's been lights out on offense. Yeah, pretty big deal. So should Dak Prescott be the NFL MVP? One for yes, two for no. Sound off for me in the comment section right now. Let's go with an update now to Peyton Hendershot. The Cowboys are expected to activate Hendershot from IR this coming week. He'll be at the end of his 21-day window, I think, on um, uh, Thursday, I believe, is the day that that window is going to wind down there. Now, Dallas will need to clear a roster spot. And my initial suspicion is, okay, are they going to, to just cut Sean McEwen? He played, how many snaps? Did I, have? I have the numbers here in front of me. Sit, but bear with me. Uh, McEwen played a grand total of eight snaps, four pass plays. I think they were all play action and four 
run blocks doesn't really move the needle that much in the end. So I would not be surprised if they try to wave McEwen, get him to the practice squad, since you're maybe going to put Tyrus Wheats on there. I, I, would, I would kind of doubt that, or you invent an injury for one of your current inactives, you know, guys like Eric Scott, Noah Ibignogany, et cetera. And her shot for his career, 12 catches, 106 yards, two TDs. He's shown flashes of making some big plays. Needs to be a lot more consistent. McEwen's a better blocker, although I would argue as of late he hasn't blocked that great, and that kind of negates the main value that he carries. So there's a chance Dallas opts to roll with four tight ends moving forward, although you have Hunter Lipke. He can do some tight end stuff for you if you need to. Um, so I don't know. We'll see what happens in the coming days. There, there will be a roster move needed to go along with activating Hendershot.